Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope everyone is doing great. Uh, today I want to go over a relatively new ETF from Defiance. In this one, they finally came out with the IWM uh, version of a high yield uh, options ETF. So I want to go over uh, some of the basics and then how I plan to go forward with this one. So is the IWM Y ETF from Defiance just a shiny new toy? I don't think so. I think it could potentially have a place in your portfolio, but it depends on what you have. Um, and so I'll go over like my personal uh, portfolio and then show you how I'm, I'm going to plan to kind of fit this in. So there's going to be uh, a little bit of good news. So are there going to be any yield opportunities? Uh, it's still new, but I believe it does uh, have some good uh, yield opportunity. So did I get any yet? The answer is no. Uh, I would say that if you don't have any high yield uh, options ETF, like maybe you're waiting, I I guess it would be okay. Like if you don't have any yet, it's not going to, uh, you know, kill your portfolio. But I'm going to tell you what I plan to do. So... And then you guys can kind of do whatever you want uh, based on that information. Because I do think there, there's some potential here with IWMY. Uh, and it's a good ticker symbol, but it's but keep in mind, it is still new. Uh, it's still priced, you know, at the time of this recording, it's still in the $20 range. So that's why I'm holding off. As you can see, like, you know, based on just like the little amount of information that we have, I don't like to buy things when they're going up. Just because, you know, the the opposite will happen in, you know, maybe a few months or so. Like, we're, we're like, you know, in September, October, like, I thought the market was going to do okay. But, it, you know, obviously, it, it didn't pan out that way. And I and I hate uh, buying when things go up because then the, the only direction that can really go is either you stay flat or you go down. Uh, so... The good thing, the only good thing I would say about September, October was it was time, it was a good time for some ETFs and some stocks uh, to pick some stuff up uh, if you're waiting. So before I kind of go uh, too deep into this, like I want to say like that the IWMY, it's based off of the, the RUT uh, index instead of like the IWM ETF. Although they're, they are based on kind of like the same concept. They're based on like uh, small cap uh, stocks in the U.S. So you should s expect like between like the, the RUT and the IWM, like the performance would be similar. And I would hope that the IWMY will also have like a kind of like a similar, similar scope. But that could be good and bad because like right now, like the small caps, like, you know, just like looking at the chart, you can see like the past, you know, few months has been pretty dreadful. Uh, it's been going down, unfortunately. And I think it's due to just a lot of interest rate uh, fears. Because, well, think about it from, from this perspective. Let's just say you're a small company and you're trying to just just survive. And when you're new, you, you kind of need outside money. And in order to get outside money, you have to borrow. And in order to borrow, you have to pay an interest rate. And right now, the interest rates are, um, from a historical standpoint, there haven't, it hasn't been that high. It depends on which bank you're going to. But, you know, when you're on a shoestring budget um, and you have to borrow, you know, look, the last thing you want is for your, your interest payments to, to go up. And that's why you're seeing... Uh, these small caps kind of suffer a little bit. So, but but let's just uh, just go back to, to this. Um, since most of my high yield ETFs so far uh, is going to be uh, kind of tech uh, focused, so that's why my biggest holding so far is in uh, triple QY and also TSLY uh, for for at least the high yield portion of my portfolio. So that's why I'm comparing uh, the RUT to the NDX because I want to see how the correlation uh, played out over the course of the year. Uh, so the bad news is that right now, the correlation is still kind of high, is 0.83. But if you look back in the past, like around like the late March, June, October, you can see that it actually went below zero. 
So those would be good times to actually get into a small cast because it, well, one, it's generally on the, well, should be on the cheaper side. And then two, I don't want uh, like my entire portfolio to go in the same direction. I do want some to, to perform well and then like in other in one environment and then the other will perform in another environment. Like for example, the triple QY has outperformed well uh, actually let me let me backtrack. I should say the triple Q in general, uh during for most of the year has outperformed just because of the large t uh large cap tech exposure. But lately it's been kind of saggy. So it's start it's starting to pick up a little bit. So I do want like something that, that could help offset um, any tech underperformance. So I think maybe like around, well, sometime next year, especially if there's a interest rate cut from the Fed, uh, then you might start to see like the small caps outperform. Because just because the, look, I think the general market is trying to price in uh, future uh, rate cuts, then the small caps in theory should outperform. Uh, it's just it should really be the market leaders um, when the economy starts to turn around. Like right now, the economy is starting to look kind of wobbly, and I hope that I'm wrong. I, I really hope that we're not in the middle of a recession, but we probably are. But the the good news is that you know in a few months, uh, hopefully, uh, we can start to to see like the economy. Uh, perform better, especially during the election year. I think the current administration would, well, if they're smart and they want to keep their jobs, they want to try to make the the economic situation better for for most citizens. So, you know, I'm, I'm crossing my fingers. Hopefully, uh, 2024 uh, will kind of build on some of the the momentum from like the first half of 2023 and try to you know get out of the slump that we're currently in. But, but that's just my opinion. Uh, so well, let me just move on to like the triple QY and the IWM. So if you look, uh, if you compare like the charts, like they look pretty similar, uh, and you you would hope that they would because of their IWM and triple Q are just ETF versions of the indices. So you you should expect that the at least the price chart to look very similar. And of course, the correlation is also uh, pretty similar as well, like like 0.84. So it's a little high right now. So I'm gonna hold off on IWMY, but I am. Uh, this is definitely on my watch list because again, if you notice, like towards um, uh, late March, uh, the June and October, that there was a chance for for people to kind of uh, jump into like small caps just to help diversify their portfolio a little bit. So. Let's go. Just go into the uh, uh, the fine print of the fund itself. So right now it's trading at a small premium. So I'm I'm definitely not gonna buy now, uh, especially if it's around twenty bucks. Um, this is just my my personal opinion. I think that if it follows like the the kind of like the price charts of Triple QY and Jeppy, also from from Defiance, I would think that the the price itself would. Uh, might might follow the same path where there's going to be some nav erosion uh, here and there uh, and i think there there's a chance to definitely pick this up at a at a discount to to net asset value so i'm a, i'm in no no rush i'm going to like set set out uh, limit orders so that i can pick them up kind of like around the same price where I'm, where i have like the triple qy um and i'm also jeppy is also on my on my watch list i think that the this is just, again, this is my my opinion that the triple QY will still uh, outperform for a little bit. And then at, at some point, the, the small caps will start to pick up some steam. Um, and that's when, like if I, if I see IWMY uh, head, head to around like maybe like the low 19, uh, mid 18s, even even like the in the $17 uh, range, uh, that's when I'm going to start like picking some up. But right now, uh, again, no rush. Uh, just just keep keep watching like the uh, the results. Um, 
Yeah, and I like how they define like, ETFs. They, they break out like their individual trades so you can see what they're doing. So on each day, um, you can see they, they probably started off with shorting uh, 16 uh, RUT uh, indice puts and then, f and then 14 the next the next tranche. And then the next day, they, they did uh, uh, they shorted 15. And by the time you read this, or, or by the time you watch this, um, you'll, there'll be more uh, uh, price history. And I, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what the like the first distribution is going to be like because then once they distribute, that's when we'll we'll probably see like the first price drop, uh, and then depending on how much they pay, like hopefully they'll keep it around um, similar to how uh, Triple QY. I think the the last one was like like around a buck or so, so I would think that the price would drop to at least like nineteen or so, and then I'll probably set out. Uh, I'll I'll have like limit orders by then, and if I get lucky, then I'll get filled on on some so and this is it's actually very tough for me to 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 um, get a, a rough dividend estimate but since they're managed by the same team um, you know I would expect the performance would be somewhere around like the 50 60 uh, percent uh, uh, annual payout and also what I'm looking for is that uh, since the ND NDX has around eight to nine times the the cost of capital of the rut like for example um if the indice is 14 19 and the the rut is like the indice is at, at around 17 14 that means like the ndx is going to cost like around nine times more to to do um to facilitate to facilitate uh trades so i, I would expect the premiums to be around like that same same price area so like just on some of the recent trades uh for like the 60 delta put and since they're the the methodology is to sell in the money puts uh that's this seems reasonable to me so like the ndx like for example if you sell a 60 delta put you should be able to pick up a, like around this 100 dollar in each eight cents uh given in the the current implied volatility and then also for the rut uh i would expect them to to get like you know eight times less, so this this twelve dollars and five cents uh, seems like right, um, around like the the ballpark area. However, there are, there are days when the NDX will will only collect uh, four and a half times premium because I'm looking at like the some of the price the the past uh, price action and the past premiums that were that are paid out. So. So that means you like you're taking on like for example if you're into uh, if you're looking at the trades and you're comparing well well should I pick up uh, uh, the ETF that's that's based on on NDX do I want that or do I want the one that's that's priced off of um, the RUT which would be like the IDWM for example so I want to see like which one offers like the better value. And since, like, if, if for example, if you see like the NDX, you're only getting like four times like the premium that you collect from the rut. But historically, uh, like you're you're priced at eight to nine, then I'm gonna go with the IWM then because why would I only pick up like four times premium, and I'm but I'm p taking up eight times the risk. I should be picking up like like at least like eight times the premium, uh, all things being equal. Um, so like, that's why I'm, I like to wait for like periods when the two are not correlated. And then I would buy the ones that's kind of like the cheaper ETF. And it doesn't have to be like cheap in terms of price. It, it could be like cheap based on like, kind of like a relative value, w which I'm trying to show you here. So, so just to see, like, again, um, this is like screenshot shots from my, uh, thinkorswim platform, uh, so like if you look at the like the sixty dollar um, put area like which is over here, like I'm again I like to assume that I can get at least mid price so that's how I'm getting the the pricing, and then you can see down here like for the rut, also like the sixty dollar um, uh, put area because I like to try to compare apples and apples so like if you if you're looking for a sixty uh, delta put then you want also want to look at the sixty delta put for like the corresponding uh, indice that you're trying to to look at. So I hope that that's 
that's helpful for you guys. And then again, like the one percent um, annual expense ratio, um, it's not um, the, the greatest, but you know, you know, at least it's in line with the other um, like like Jeppy and Triple QY. So hopefully, in the future, once there's more competition, um, you know, maybe the there'll be like a price war and then like the expense ratio can trend down over time. So I think the pros are definitely, uh, there's some convenience here, especially now that there's more uh, different um, style clashes and different risk reward setups for these different ETFs. It's definitely a convenient way to, to like if you don't have the time to monitor all the different indices, like these ETFs are like a big help. And they definitely will save you some money on like for smaller accounts. Um, and I do like, how defiance uh, has like their like the trades uh, broken down, um, and then the IWM is definitely a good uh, chance to diversify based on also uh, correlation and potential outperformance. Uh, if you swap in and out between like the small caps and then the the like the techs uh, sector, and of course like the risk will be you know the expense ratio is a little bit up there. Um, and then there's no control over individual strike selection. Um, and then the, the implied volatility going forward could collapse, especially if the market starts to 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 go back up, then you know uh, people are less willing to to buy insurance, which in turn uh, will affect your your premium collection. Um, and then that might not be available uh, fully at all brokerages. And of course, like the yields won't be consistent from month to month. Um, so if you like this type of content, uh, please consider uh, giving a like and subscribe because it's free, uh, please. And um, also, like subscribers that tend to be healthier, wealthier, better looking, well endowed. And I think my subscribers are all around good peeps. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.